Most guys, historically, were, were known for not seeking medical help unless two things happen. One, my penis don't work. Yeah. Or two, I'm having a heart attack and I need you to bail me out right now. That's when they want to finally, you know, get things in gear and start exercising. It's, it's like, dude, you got 50 years of damage on your body. You can't really just undo that overnight. You can't do that. Welcome to the show where we help you make smart nutrition simple. If you want proven nutrition strategies to help you build a better body and create the energy to show up for your family without overly restrictive and unrealistic dieting, then you're in the right place. Make sure to subscribe and enjoy this episode. Welcome to another episode of the Smart Nutrition Made Simple Show. I am your host, as always, Ben Brown, owner and head coach here at Body Systems. Today on the show, I'm joining forces with Justin Grochet from the Restore Clinic. Justin's a quadruple board certified nurse practitioner and certified strength and conditioning coach specializing in men's hormone replacement therapy and anti-aging. He provides patient-centered healthcare services, utilizing a multimodal approach of modern medicine, integrative medicine, behavioral medicine, and fitness and nutrition to help men live the life they deserve. In today's discussion, we dive deep into the heart of men's health issues, from the silent epidemic of wearing stress as a badge of honor and its repercussions, to the critical role hormones play beyond the gym and the bedroom. We explore the importance of community in combating isolation, the transformative power of hiring a coach, and, of course, provide practical steps men can take today to reclaim their health. So, without further ado, here's my conversation with Justin Grochet. Justin Grochet, welcome to the Smart Nutrition Made Simple Show. What's up, man? Hey, how are you doing? Um, pleasure to be here. And actually, interesting you say Grochet, because technically, phonetically, that's, that's correct, but... You know, most people are like gross, grossy, grossy. Yeah. So, hey, man, you, man. I, I did some semblance of, of my homework in leading up to this conversation. So I always, you know, try and get our guests names correct. And uh, so I'm glad that that was was in, in fact correct. Um, yeah. So welcome, man. Really, really excited to have you. I appreciate your time. I'm excited for this conversation, uh, mostly because, <laughs> well, your regular dude like me, um, but, and you're speaking to other dudes, uh, which I love to do, um, and educating other guys about seemingly complex topics, but we have a similar background in that from what I understand, you know, you, you came up through kind of strength and conditioning, um, mm -hmm. with the CSCS. In fact, I, you know, why don't I let you do your diligence in terms of just letting our listeners know a little bit about you and kind of your background. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the intro, Ben. So I started off as a trainer about, it's brief, I'm 40 now, so we're looking at almost 20 years, and man, it goes by fast, seriously. Yes, it People does. Talk about how quick time goes back. But in retrospect, you're like, nah, it's been almost 20 years. Yeah. But through the background of being a trainer, sometimes your scope of practice, sometimes uh, I'm out how much you can help men, sometimes you can hit a scene. So that's kind of where I saw myself thinking, what can I do to take men's health to the next level? What can I do? So I went to school, went to Vanderbilt University, uh, became a nurse practitioner, but I still maintain that, that training background. So now that's how present day, let's fast forward, that's how the Restore Clinic came to be. So it's a hormone optimization clinic, but we also focus on lifestyle optimization. We talk to guys about their training program, about their nutrition program, talk about the fitness, the sleep habits, because I wanted to be able to do more and add that clinical aspect to the health and the optimal performance side of things. So yeah, that's, that's the restore clinic in a elevator speech, so to speak. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and so do you use the testosterone replacement as the gateway to broach the topic of nutrition, lifestyle training? Um, or vice versa. A lot of times guys come to us because they have hormonal issues. It could be metabolic, it could be low T, it could be their thyroid, whatever. But these guys come to us knowing that, hey man, there's something off. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to talk to. And they approach us. They know that, you know, the way we offer our services is we kind of meet people halfway. 
instead of being that authoritative medical side of things, because let's be real, people hate going to see their doctor. They hate going to their provider because what's the experience to go like? You commute, you take a full day off, you sit in the office for what? An hour, hour and a half. If you want to get a follow-up, you're looking six months out. No, we want to keep it more of a wholesome partnership relationship with our patients. So yes, we do use the hormonal aspect as a uh, introduction that like open up talking about their health, talking about the nutrition, talk about, you know, their relationship with their wife, how's their sexual performance going. And then we can start branching off from there and talking about other things like, you know, nutrition side of things, or you get your sleep, have you cut back on smoking, which believe it or not, 2024 people still smoke. It, it tends to be the older gentleman, but people still smoke. Yeah. Uh, we talk, we talk about like, you know, uh, what's your training program like? Nutrition. Um, we have those conversations with guys that sometimes they don't even have with their, you know, their therapist or their wife or their best friends. Sure. I, I just, it resonated with me when you said about guys not wanting to go to the doctor. And I think that there's certainly the, the time and inconvenience element. And I also think there's the ego element to it, right? And, and I don't know about you, but, and, and to be fair, like, I haven't been to the doctor very much in, in years and years and I'm seemingly healthy dude. But with that said, it doesn't mean I don't have issues. And by that same token is when guys do go to the doctor, I don't think it's probably uncommon for them to kind of gloss over perhaps some of the symptoms that they might have oh, yeah. to, right? to say nothing of like just the mental, emotional, um, psychosomatic stuff that we all deal with. The last thing I think a typical guy wants to do is to express all of those things, especially in the face of a total stranger, and especially when it's clear that that yeah. total stranger has about seven minutes of time for them, right? Yeah. So, so the whole medical system in and of itself isn't really setting us up for success. No, no, it's, it's very reactive. And with that being said, this is actually a good segue because- most guys, historically, we're, we're known for not seeking medical help unless two things happen. One, my penis don't work. Yeah. Or two, I'm having a heart attack and I need you to bail me out right now. Right. That's like, seriously, most, we're historically known for just waiting till crap hits the fan and then we need to be bailed out last minute. That's it. Yeah. And that's how it was. I used to work in internal medicine and... Seriously, guys would have a heart attack and they'll be like, that's when they want to finally, you know, get things in gear and start exercising. This is it's like, dude, you got 50 years of damage on your body. You can't really just undo that overnight. You can't do that. Um, so when I was in internal medicine, one thing I would use to open up some kind of dialogue, I'd be like, I would always use the penis argument. I'd be like, look, dude, if you don't get your stuff in gear now, buddy down there ain't going to be working. Mm. That, will, that will make a guy listen real quick when he finds out he can't you know, have intimacy with his wife, all of a sudden, yeah, you got, you got his ears. Yeah. But yes, you're very correct. They gloss over so much stuff unless it's a bail me out moment. I'd like to believe, and, and hopefully with conversations like this and, and a lot of the uh, amazing guests and, and practitioners and experts that I have on this show, um, that we are helping to create some semblance of a paradigm shift mm -hmm. for men to be open to the idea that it's very okay, necessary, mm -hmm. um, and appropriate to, to be okay not being okay, right? Mm -hmm. to, to be okay acknowledging that they're experiencing symptoms, that, that they need help, that they need someone to talk to, and that there are practitioners like you um, that can help them through these scenarios because it's not as simple as just going into a doctor and, and getting a prescription um for low, than that. right right exactly mm -hmm. and that's exactly it just thirty thousand foot view like what are the overt symptoms that warrant a guy to consider going down this road there are a myriad of symptoms and a lot of times they like you said they'll gloss over to say yeah it's, it's part of getting old you know brain fog, you know, you, your sense of acumen, your ability to categorize thoughts, mm, not sharp anymore. Uh, you wake up, you feel horrible. You go to bed, you feel horrible. 
yeah, those are smaller ones. But the main ones that most guys look, think when they think low T, they think ah, sex drive bad. But there's more to mm -hmm. that. Insulin resistance, your lipids start looking like crap, nitric oxide levels go down, got horrible brain fog, can't recall anything, bone density goes down, you get this metabolic shift to where you're unhealthier as a whole constellation. You're unhealthier. There's a whole lot of things that come with low testosterone. But again, most people simply think it's my, my libido sucks, but it's way more complex than that. Matter of fact, there's even new literature showing that if you are diabetic or becoming diabetic or insulin resistant, guess what you should be evaluated for? Low testosterone. Those two things go hand in hand because testosterone sensitizes your body to dispose of glucose more efficiently. People mm -hmm. don't think of things like that, but you got something that's metabolically unhealthy like that, insulin resistant, fatty liver, guess what? You should probably get your numbers checked too. Most guys though, it starts with the gym talk, you know, and I'm not strong or not making gains like I used to, but it, again, that's, that's a very superficial view as to an actual endocrine disease. That's kind of how I interpret it. And I'm trying to relay that information to my patients too, that look, man, this is more than just putting on gains and, you know, recovering faster. It's more than that. You're setting your body up to be more metabolically efficient for life is what it's for. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, maybe the gateway is, you know, like we, we mentioned earlier is I think it's, it's top of mind. And, and again, we're seeing kind of this paradigm shift. It's becoming much more socially acceptable for men to turn to testosterone optimization. But, you know, what I appreciate about kind of the way you explain that is it's about, it's so much deeper. It's so much bigger in terms of overall metabolic health, longevity, just overall wellness that these elements are need to be top of mind, need to be, people need to, and men need to understand these, these concepts, mm -hmm. um, these blood markers and take ownership over their health above and beyond just saying, well, I'm going to go on to TRT just so I can improve my body composition or just so I can keep an erection sure. right, or improve my libido. Yeah, those are just the general platitudes that people think. They just think better sex drive, get stronger. But again, really, being on testosterone alone can make you live longer. Even the, the VA study, over 80,000 guys, two cohorts, they all had established cardiovascular disease. The guys treated with testosterone, guess what? They lived longer and had less incidence of further cardiovascular disease. Because testosterone in itself and estradiol, which comes with it, is going to make your body more efficient, especially in terms of blood flow, which is going to lead to more blood flow with your, you know, your arteries, through your heart, through your brain. So again, it's more than just, you know, it's more than just a bro fuel. It's more than just that. It is the elixir that makes us who we are and gives us longevity and gives us a quality of life that we deserve, quite frankly. Yeah. Have you observed scenarios where just improving nutrition, lifestyle, stress management are enough to back them out of the hole that they put themselves in. And obviously it's very contextual and depends, but sure. let's start there. Yeah. The, so that, we've definitely seen some case by case scenarios. Like some, like for instance, say if I've got come to me and he does have some symptoms and we evaluate, we discuss, talk about what he's doing. Let's say he's got untreated sleep apnea on top of that. He doesn't work out. If, if they maximize their lifestyle interventions, for some people, you can see a, a substantial increase. And for some people, you see nothing. It's a very case-by-case -case basis. So with that being said, though, you should be improving those things anyway. Right. Because, and I have this conversation, like say you come to me, brain fog, low libido, joints hurt, everything hurts, can't recover worth the darn, all that stuff. And let's say, I'm going to tell you, putting you on testosterone is not going to fix all of that. It's not. You have to I always tell this to mom clients. I say, you got to meet the medicine halfway, man. You do. At the end of the day, you got to meet the medicine halfway. It, it's not going to do the work for you. It's not going to make you go to the gym. It's not going to help you eat cleaner. It's not going to make you sleep deeper. It's not going to do all that work for you. You still have to put in your work. And if you're not willing to do that, then honestly, there's only so much you're going to get out of it. And we may not be the best option to work with you, just being real. And I always try to give people realistic expectations of what they can get from it. I always tell them, you know, we can raise your ceiling. We can raise your genetic ceiling through optimization. But if you want to get to that ceiling, you have to climb up there. 
you have to be the one that puts in the work to get there. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and so I, I, I'm glad that you know you preface that because I just don't find a lot of practitioners that are in the know around acknowledging the importance of of addressing everything. Right? It's 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 the conventional medical model. Uh, it's the TRT clinics on every corner, and it's the conventional med docs that are just not progressive enough or just don't understand or are lost in, you know, the old conventional wisdom yeah. around, you know, in injecting once every two weeks or just once a week yeah. uh, at a subclinical dose and not individualizing the process. Yeah, everything's 100% individualized for sure. Well, and, and that's where I, you know, keep trying to hit home through these conversations of, enabling our listeners to take ownership over their own health and understand, okay, you can't just go to a clinic and expect them to just write you the script and, you know, say, we'll see you in six months and just sure. do what we told you to do. It's this, it's very nuanced process that if you're not focusing on nutrition and training and sleep and stress management, right. And all of these uh, other sides of the coin, um, then what I'm hearing is you're just simply not going to get the benefit. It's not, it's only going to take you so far. It's only going to take you so far. Now, let's say you are that dude who does have low testosterone, but you are focusing on your sleep, you're focusing on your nutrition, you're meditating, you're doing yoga, doing your mobility, you're doing everything you need to be doing, man. Um, and then you still have it. That's the person who can literally make a dramatic 180 in just a matter of three to six months. That is the, those are the patients that are so much fun to work with because mm -hmm. uh, the amount of drastic change you see in them and how much it actually changes their life is so rewarding. Obviously, the patients who are that compliant, they're not as abundant, let's be real. Look, let's, let's be real. They're, I'm sure you've worked with people in the past who are just an absolute pleasure to work with because they'll do what you tell them to. Yeah. Yeah, they're not as abundant. But those are the ones who it can be absolutely life-changing. Yeah. And actually, I mean, I, I think that I have a fair amount of those conversations because a lot of guys that we work with, you know, eventually that becomes the limiting factor, right? To the degree that we have spent time focusing on improving mm -hmm. nutrition and working on improving body composition and energy and sleep behaviors and lifestyle factors. And of course, sure. training and lean body composition. And, and then it comes to the point where it's like, okay, for the level of effort that I'm putting in relative to the gains that I'm making or not making relative to, okay, here's what's going on on blood work. Then oftentimes yeah. it, it's the, the, the last domino is that conversation of like, okay, here's, you know, what the options are. It yeah. may be worth now considering going down this road, whereas previously, and, and of course, referring them out to a, a qualified practitioner like yourself, but um, whereas in a year ago or two years ago, it might have been, you know, I don't know that I'm ready to go down that road yet. Yeah. Um, and let's see what we can do naturally, if you will. Um, right. So that's a perfect example, though, of, of, of taking ownership over all of those kind of foundational pillars to only come to the point where, look, you you're doing everything that you can do. Now let's put the icing on yeah. the cake. Yeah. Sometimes. And, and again, for s some people, I hate to say it, but it is what it is. Sometimes no matter how much work you put in, this is, this is your genetics. This is your endocrine system. This is where you're at, but always let you know that the positive is going to be so much worth it. Since you are doing mm. all your work, taking that next step is going to make it so much more rewarding and so much more, more fulfilling for you at that point. No, that also brings, Bill, on another thing you just said, you, you get them to that point, they're, they're listening to you, you're coaching them well, and then it's time to refer. Well, that's where a lot of the, the, the dichotomy of making a proper move comes into play. A lot of people say, okay, man, I'm just going to go to my, you know, my primary care. And then the primary care says, yeah, it's 260. You're good. You're yeah, you're normal. You're, you're normal. Even though, you know, the range is 250 to 1100. Hey, you're 260. And then guys, they kind of get defeated at that point. That's the problem. They go to the wrong advice at that point. Even though you've set them up for success, 
from that point forward, it kind of kind of puts a veil on them that makes them think, you know what, from here on out, I'm not even going to fool with it. And again, that brings yeah. the conversation how guys don't want to see the doctor because, yeah. You know what? That's that such a good point. Yeah, that's such a good point. And I'm glad you brought that up because it's really about, I mean, this is why I'm doing this is, is to really just try and reinforce this trusted network of practitioners and educate our um, on our audience again around the steps. There are options available to you, uh, but you have to go out of your way and do your homework. And again, like take responsibility for the process because it's the the medical mo- like our parents' medical model. Because I'm mm-hmm. you know I'm 44, right? And for my parents, every solution revolves around just ask the doctor. The script, a hundred percent. Like, well, what does the doctor say? You know, like it's it's the answer to everything. And 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 we've come to the realization that obviously, obviously that is not the solution, especially when it comes to the nuances of, of hormonal optimization in this particular case, among so many different other things. And we won't go down that road. But the point is that okay, so where there's the confusion, there's the frustration around. Well, where do we turn? Because I went and saw. One practitioner, they said this. I went and saw another practitioner. They said mm. this. I went sure. and saw one guy. He seemed great, but then there was no follow up. And it's like that's a really, you know, challenging part uh, around finding someone who's going to work for you. Hey guys, I want to interrupt this conversation briefly with an exciting announcement. If you're a father and struggling to lose the pounds that have crept on over the years, I understand your challenge. You're juggling a successful career, a loving family, and now you're looking to regain that energy and physique that seems to have slipped away. And that's exactly why I created PrimeFit Operating System. PrimeFit OS is a unique hybrid coaching program designed specifically for men like you. Now, you guys know me. We're not about quick fixes or impossible routines. Instead, we focus on real sustainable change through personalized nutrition and science-driven strength training all wrapped up in a supportive community with expert guidance directly from me and my 20 years of experience working with men just like you. Imagine mastering your nutrition without restrictive dieting, getting stronger and leaner and boosting your overall energy, all without overwhelming your already busy schedule. With Prime Fit OS, you're getting more than just a cookie cutter nutrition and fitness plan. You're embarking on a transformative journey that fits into your life not the other way around. So if you're ready to take the first step towards a healthier, leaner, stronger, more energetic, confident, ass-kicking you, join us over at Prime Fit Operating System. Trust me, guys, your family, your career, and most importantly, you will thank you for it. So if you guys are interested in getting started and want to find out more about the program, let's chat. Just head over to primefitos.com forward slash call and grab a time on my calendar. Remember, it's your time to be at your prime. When we get to this point, right? Someone's listening to this and they're saying, all right, I feel like I'm in a position where I really need to dig deeper into my blood work. I realize now it's beyond just looking at total testosterone and okay, maybe total testosterone and just free testosterone. And I'm realizing that Okay, just because total and free are within quote unquote normal ranges, right? That I'm still experiencing symptoms. And so now, like, what do I do? What else should I be testing for in a nutshell, like loose overview of the big things? And and where can I turn from there? Yeah, and that's the, the hardest part there is how to navigate the healthcare system from that point. And people hate hearing this, but you're probably not going to find this in the insurance model. I mean, first and foremost, you're going to have to go outside of the insurance model to find someone that is going to be an advocate for your health just as much as you are an advocate for your health. Because if you go the insurance model, it is all about getting in, getting out. That's what it's about. And they're not getting, those providers that work in that model are not getting paid more, reimbursed more to become an expert in a niche area. They're not. So there's no incentive for them to go out of their way and spend years and years studying the small niche area. So yes, you have to go to a pay, you know, a cash pay, private pay models, which one to do. Finding that type of provider is going to, it's going to take some work on your end. It's going to take some, 
Yeah, you're going to have to put some effort in. You can't just like go to the first guy you see. Because most clinics, like you were talking about earlier, you're talking about how T clinics are just like, you know, just random now. Unfortunately, there's popping up on every corner at this point. They're kind of like how the pill mills were like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I hate to say that, but uh, they are becoming way too prominent everywhere. Finding a good provider is going to be the biggest challenge, though. It is. You don't have to network with other people like your, people like yourself, people that are professionals in this industry that actually have come face to face and gone to these conferences with these experts. That's going to be one of the biggest things. We get a lot of clients, honestly, from other providers, like other providers in other areas, like, um, like gastroenterology, you know, even endocrine, even urology, who should sure. be doing this. They send them to us because we've networked with them. That's, and so. It, a lot of it does come down to collaborative efforts with other allied health professionals, such as people like yourself, man. It really does. And we appreciate that, man. Guys like you are the reason why patients and thousands of people out there actually know that there's more for them beyond the traditional, you know, the show up, get a script, see in a year model. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate well, that, man. I think so many of us practitioners are in the field that we're in and do what we do because we've suffered in our own ways with these types of things. And so we're empathetic to the needs of our clientele, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, and and so that's why it's so important to me is because I understand the pain points that our, our clients are going through. And this is stuff that I'm learning for myself too, you know, going down this road, being a 44-year-old business owner and father of three with a high stress lifestyle and you know, someone who's trained really hard for a really long time and beat myself up through sports. It's like, I'm literally my clientele right now going down this road and, and, and running the labs and looking, okay, well, what are my options right now? And I'm, I'm right at the precipice, full disclosure of just like making those considerations. Do I, sure. do I continue to white knuckle it or do I, you know, go down the road of TRT? And, and so, We'll see from there. I'm not there yet, but I'm probably pretty close. But you want to have it in your way, man, living that kind of life where you're just grinding, training hard and living a good life. Yeah. You want to have it. It's great. It's rewarding. Well, I think it's it's also helped me speak intelligibly to this, mm -hmm. right? Of just, of, of again, just being empathetic to the to the nuances because it's never cut and dry. And as much as we would love it to be of like, well, I'll just go on. It's because it's going to help me lean out. It's like, dude, there's so many other factors at play. Sure. Um, and, and what I think is most important is really just looking at, okay, like I, I appreciate that you brought up metabolic health and, and, you know, insulin resistance and high blood pressure and all of these, uh, factors that are contributing to, uh, longevity and, uh, you know, muscle maintenance. And so I guess in your opinion, what are the things from a nutrition and lifestyle standpoint? that are perhaps some of the biggest saboteurs to our hormonal profiles, mm. to the con contribution to poor blood sugar regulation, to insulin resistance, to metabolic syndrome, to some of the things that are plaguing, you know, modern day man. To be honest, one of the biggest behaviors I see people doing is just drinking too much, man. Honestly. Drinking too much alcohol. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, you have to say a few, you know, glass of wine, whatever. But I'm talking about like, they're putting it back. Like, you know, work's up today. Let's go smash a six or no, dude. Let's have a discussion that that's in, in, its, in itself, that's its own behavior that we need to address. Besides the testosterone point, that's something that you need to acknowledge that you need to take care of that. Otherwise, it's going to take care of you. And when I say take care of you, I mean, Count your numbers, count your days is a blessing because you can't do that for everybody. But yes, like something like that, those are those conversations we have with guys. Sometimes we just have to shoot the shit straight and tell them, look, dude, you're literally killing yourself right now, man. But yes, to answer your question, that's one of the biggest destructors I see. Another thing is people overlooking the value of sleep. Can we just take a step back just for a second? Because I, I, yeah. I do think it's really relevant to continue to hit on, despite the fact that, you know, I ha I've had this conversation on the show before, but I'd love your perspective just really briefly on this alcohol topic because it's the most socially acceptable drug that there, that's out there. Yeah. And you know what I'm hearing from you and what we've heard from other other experts is is that it's it's absolutely detrimental to our health. A lot of 
medical professionals and, and practitioners will talk about there is no healthy amount of alcohol intake. Um, and so, you know, where do you stand? What are your observations? What are your beliefs around it in terms of health, longevity, body composition, hormonal health? I mean, that and smoking are like that and smoking and neglecting sleep are some of the things that can absolutely just annihilate your health and just age you very, very poorly. Yeah. And you think about, and they can kind of come hand in hand because they, if you're doing one, chances are you might be doing the other, but they're going to have a lot of overlap into how they negatively impact each other as well. Yeah. If you're tipping it back, you ain't sleeping good. Yeah. But right. you're, you're smoking, you're not sleeping good. You can't breathe. And bad habits tend to come in multiples from what I've seen for a lot of people. Um, it's not like people hit the gym, sleep eight hours, eat a good, healthy breakfast, and then knock it back. No, it's usually bad habits kind of build on bad habits. So a lot of times when we get people who are very metabolically destructive, at least from a laboratory biomarker standpoint and a behavior standpoint, you can kind of compound that there's multiple factors. It's not just like one factor that led to all that. No. So yes. Yeah. It is, dude. It's if you don't have to do it, don't, I mean, yeah, you get mad. Don't do it. Totally. And and I think that there's always like the rationalization of, well, you know, it's, I just have <laughs> one a day, right? I'm not like drinking a six pack a night. I'm, I'm having one a day or I'm having, you know, a few a week. And I think it certainly depends on the person. At the end of the day, I agree in, in sort of looking at it's like, there's virtually no amount that's quote unquote healthy for us. And the way I think about it is I, I do think that there's a social sort of community element that could in some ways be like psychologically beneficial, a glass of wine here and there and, and write those types of things. But the reason why we're utilizing the alcohol in the first place, I think often lends itself to right? Masking up yeah. other things, right? Masking stress and coping, exactly that, exactly mm -hmm. coping. And so um, that's where I think that stress, stress management or lack thereof is perhaps one of the biggest mm -hmm. detriments. How do you view that? Because I, I know you mentioned sleep and, and I do think alcohol and sleep are tied together, but how do you view stress in the context of everything that we're discussing? I think most men are a nerd. We are conditioned to believe that stress is something we have to tough out. We just have to deal with it. Um, it's we have to bite the bullet and just suck it up because we're a mind. You know what I mean? Right, That's right. what I feel like we have been led to believe stress is. But the reality is most men don't channel their stress very well. Most men from a mental health standpoint are much worse than they would like to portray that. And I feel like a lot of men have been led to believe that part of just being a man is, you know, you can tough it out. You can deal with mm -hmm. it. You don't have to deal with stress. That's not a thing. And, and they tend to think that that makes them less of a human being or it makes them weak or it makes them susceptible if they were to, you know, admit that there's a problem. But as we were talking about, that's where the coping mechanism comes into play or the lack thereof. And thus it introduces the other poor habits, which build and build and build and build. Again, I don't usually see poor habits in singulars. I usually see them in multiples. And then they present to us, and metabolically, their hormones suck. They are not healthy. Their glucose sucks. And they wonder why they feel like crap. But a lot of times, the chicken or the egg are both in the same sentence. Not going to lie, they are. You know, it definitely shines light at the bigger picture here <laughs> because I agree with you in terms of stress. We wear it as men. You know, we often wear it as a badge of honor. I, I can do more, sleep less, <laughs> like all of this bullshit, Instagram, warrior mentality. And so I I say that because it, it feels really challenging, right? And, and I think it lends itself to the more need to surround yourself with the community of guys that can be supportive to having these tough conversations of, of giving ourselves permission to be okay, not trying to grind and hashtag hustle all of the frickin' sure. time. Right. And it's part of what I appreciate around 
you know, being in rooms with guys like you and other practitioners, again, because we do our best to try and walk the talk, but we all struggle with the very same things. Where do you suggest that guys turn, obviously, like with your practice, with your clinic? I know you you do stuff on YouTube, part of, uh, of, of TRT communities. Like, I feel like those are potentially good opportunities for guys to turn to, to be more educated, to surround themselves with more like-minded guys. What are the communities that you find yourself a part of? It's interesting because you, you brought the point of community. About half of men don't even have a best friend. Isn't that crazy? Seriously. About half, almost half of men don't have a best friend. Don't even have friends. That's, yeah. that's, it's, it's, hor- it's a horrible statistic. It's absolutely heartbreaking if you, you ask me. Yeah. So... We do have some guys like that, and we would refer them to therapy is one thing we do. Believe it or not, this may sound kind of silly, but the power of having a pet yeah. can go, can, dude, having a dog can easily add five, 10 years to your life. It's, it's nuts. Like, have a, yeah. even have a plant or something. If they don't have that community, then find a hobby, landscaping, gardening, handyman work, whatever. You need to have something that helps you be more than just an existence. Because most people, what are we doing? The average person, think about it. They're going to work, they're going to bed, and they're coping poorly in between, and they might exercise here and there. They don't have an existence. People need to create some kind of identity or existence. So for guys that don't have the community, we try to encourage those type of behaviors. And we also encourage therapy. I'm not going to lie. There's nothing in a dang thing wrong with it. If you, if you are struggling, man, reach out to a therapist, a counselor, they will teach you how to cope. They'll teach you how to, how to uh, rationalize your feelings, how to control these manifestations of what you're thinking, what you're believing. They'll help you cope and control that. That's one thing that most people don't have the ability to do. But yes, community is key, man. And, and again, it's heartbreaking that most guys don't even have a best friend. And v- less guys have two to three friends. And yeah. I always find so much value and benefit in, in getting around a group of guys cracking jokes, laughing, um, being vulnerable, I think is really, really important, challenging, but, but really, really important. And what I've found as I get older here is, is making sure that you're surrounding yourself with guys that you can be vulnerable around, right? It's, mm-hmm. yeah. it's like, listen, we're guys, so we're always cracking jokes and, and, and busting each other's balls. And, and I think that should be there, but it's also kind of like you want to be okay being around guys that you can be honest mm-hmm. and open yeah. with and share your struggles and that are willing to share their struggles with you. And this is not just like bitching about our wives or kids type of nonsense. No, that, no nothing like that. Right? It's legitimately like, here's what I'm struggling with right now. And how do you guys cope with this? And and just having someone listen to you and hear you out. And I've been a part of a couple of different groups and have a dear group of friends that a small dear group of friends that um, I know I can be open and honest with that I think is really valuable. How do you make sure, because you, ru- you run a clinic, you're obviously a busy dude. How do you go about managing your stress levels, making sure that you're taking care of you? Well, I'm a very structured person. I like having lists. I have my list right here. It tells me what to do because that way I'm being time efficient and I'm not being time poor. I think it's one thing a lot of people aren't very good with is mm. time management. So, and you know, you've worked with dudes. They'll say, oh, I ain't got the time for this. And the everybody does, man. We yeah. all do. You're a business owner. You got three, three little ones. I mean, it doesn't come out of nowhere. So I'm a very structured person. Lights go off at a certain time. Phones go off at a certain time. Every night, my wife and I, we, we do yoga. We meditate before we go to bed. It's non-negotiable because that is my decompression time. For me, that is decompression time. My workouts are scheduled. They happen in the middle of the day, right when I'm feeling, you know, you go up the hill of the day, you're feeling great. It's yep, starting to downturn. Sure. That's, yep. that's when I work out to pump me back up again for the rest of the day. Because mentally, I feel the sharpest from like nine to about one. And that kind of pumps me up and gets me going for the rest of the day. So to stay on task, everything is by the book. Everything is scheduled. And I try to encourage people to do something similar. It can be a loose schedule, you know, plus or minus 15 minutes, 20 minutes here. It doesn't have to be neurotic or anything, but you need to have some kind of structure in your day. You, you really do. Otherwise, you're just bleeding time. You won't realize 20 here, 20 there, 20 here, 20 there. That's four hours, like just like that. 
It's a great point. Uh, I would say, show me your calendar. I'll show you your priorities. And, uh, you know, that's where it's like, listen, dude, we, we all have the same 24 hours, right? And, and of course, we have different responsibilities within that 24 hours, but that lends itself to like have to have the structure in place of making those things non-negotiable, the things that matter to you, your family, your work, family. right? Mm -hmm. Your marriage, um, yourself, right? Your, your own training and nutrition. And, uh, and so with respect to nutrition, kind of what do you do in terms of like number of meals per day? How much protein do you eat? Um, like, what does that look like? Just really loose. I do have a CSCS background for people yeah. that don't know certified strength conditioning. I do have the strength and conditioning knowledge, but even then I have a coach. I have a coach. You know why? Because with the time here, last thing I want to do is crunch through spreadsheets, spending more time trying to program my own stuff out. And plus you can't see yourself objective or subjective. There's always that influence. You can't do it. That's why, that's why you don't treat yourself. That's why you don't treat family or friends. Right. You don't do that. You've got right. your blockers on. So I, I have a coach. I let him tell me how much to eat what to work out, what to do. I show up, I do it. Mm -hmm. So Done. yeah, right now I'm about 165, 170 grams of protein a day, yeah. fat about 65, 70. There's a little looseness and carbs, 250 and 300. That's where I'm nice. cruising at right now. Yeah. And so I guys... average 2,500. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, and what are you weighing in at like 180? Right now I'm 171. Actually okay. did yeah, yep, 171 this morning. Yeah. So that's great. So that's like probably pretty solid maintenance for you. Yeah. 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 And I like, I'm, I love being here. feel great. Joints feel great. Life's great. I have no complaints. And again, hiring a coach has been one of the best things for me. And I, I don't care what someone does career wise. I don't care how smart that they're a brilliant coach. Let someone else's eyes be on you. you. You let them be objective. It's the best thing you can do for you. Sometimes Dude, I, to, I couldn't, possibly agree with you more i mean i've had a coach for in in multiple facets of my life uh for years and years and um i have a same similar to you like dude i'm cs i've been cscs for 20 years i have a master's degree in nutrition and exercise and wellness i have a coach i have a fitness and nutrition mm -hmm. coach i have a business coach mm -hmm. i have a financial coach yeah. like dude yeah. and and you know what's interesting is i i look at the medical paradigm as the exact same way it's like, I'm, I'm not going to expect insurance to take care of me being able to optimize my health. If I want to optimize my fitness and nutrition, I'm going to hire someone who's an expert yeah. at it. And I'm more than happy to pay from a medical standpoint to be able to do these things as well. I, I expect to pay for these things. I also look at this as a long-term investment. Right? I'm going to save money on the back end. And, if, and, and listen, for I think for the types of people that we work with, Right. We're, we're working with business professionals, decision makers, people that truly value their time, energy and worth. And, sure. it, and, and this is where they have to look at it as an investment of, of, of what is this saving them and, and how are they going to, you know, what's the ROI on this investment, right? Because we can certainly make a case for how they're going to make that money up uh, in considerable amounts on Absolutely. the back end because of how much better they feel. Think how much energy, if you're sleeping better, you're going to wake up with more energy. You're going to train harder. You're going to recover faster. You're going to think clear. You're going to build better relationships. You're going to attract more of the right people, right? When you walk in a room and you're in great shape and you show up with confidence and, you know, clarity, right? You're just, you're just attracting the type of people that you're going to build solid relationships with. So I don't think Absolutely. you can put a, a money, uh, you know, a dollar sign on investing in your health in this way. No, absolutely not. And your body is your billboard, man. Your body and mind are the biggest reflection of your own personal investment in yourself. It's it's crazy because people will spend twelve hundred bucks a month on a car payment. Yeah. Right. And then they'll, they'll 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 bitch and moan about paying two hundred bucks a month for your health. Okay, that's a priority system. You clearly don't have your priorities right. And it shows. I pull up your blood work, it shows, bro. I can yeah. see exactly where you're putting your money and it, it ain't looking good for you. So yeah, absolutely, man. Coach is the best darn thing you can have. I don't care what anyone says. I'm fully believer. Dude, Justin, I really, this is, this is always great. Just talking shop. Obviously we resonate in so many different things, but I do want to respect your time. And so um, before I let you go, where can people find out more about you, your clinic, how they can work with you? 
The Restore Clinic. Yep, www.therestoreclinic.com. Instagram, The Restore Clinic. TikTok, believe it or not, we get a lot of business from TikTok. Mm. Um, we've even had to allocate certain days in the month just for patients from out of state who find us on TikTok. Um, so yeah, on Great. TikTok, our accounts at The Restore Clinic as well. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Love it. So, yeah, no, it's great. We'll have obviously those links in the show notes, TikTok, huh? I guess, well, I'm not going to start a TikTok account. I'm not there yet. I'm not ready. Not for personal reasons, for business 100%. reasons. It's great, but I, I, I wouldn't let kids on there, man. It's filth. Dude, thank you, sir, for your time, right, thank uh, you. energy, um, knowledge, wisdom, and um, and I appreciate you. We'll talk soon. Thanks, man. Thank you so much for listening. And if you found this content valuable, here are four ways I can help you in your nutrition journey for free. One, grab a free copy of my Fat Loss Fix Guide at fatlossfixguide.com. Two, join my free group at smartnutritionmadesimple.com. Three, subscribe to my YouTube channel at smartnutritionmadesimpletv.com. Four, Leave a five-star rating and positive review so that we can gain access to more nutrition experts ready to share their knowledge with you and ultimately help more people make smart nutrition simple.